Paper Mario Sticker Star, one of the most disappointing games of last decade. This adventure takes Mario doing the same exact thing he's been doing since forever, saving the princess. Only, it's less interesting than normal this time around. However, Peach is always worried that we might get hurt on every adventure we do. So this time, let's reassure her that we can save her without too much worry about my life. So, what is the minimum amount of damage we can take to beat Sicker Star? We need to take the least amount of damage to the end of the game. If we do manage to take unnecessary damage, we can just reload our clean damage free save. Anyway, with all that, let's go ahead and start the game. After the intro and reopening the Aquaburg's exit, we come across a Goomba trio that blocks our way. This is a problem, as none of the stickers we casually picked up on the way can kill all three at the same time, and none of the stickers Kirstie's gives us help either. Seriously? A roadblock already? Well, no. Because there is indeed a way to get past this. Here in this block during the intro is a Bah Hammer, and with this we can just instead put them to sleep for a turn. Statuses are basically like Paper Mario 64's. They're incredibly broken. Even if you hit a sleeping opponent, they will not wake up, letting us take them all down with no trouble at all. 1-1. The next fight is Bowser Jr., but this fight is scripted. Just use the scissors and continue on. The next real fight is the trio again, but this time with 2 more HP and a jump immunity. Just do the same thing as last fight. Put them to sleep and hammer them. Easy. 1-2. Now we have 5 Goombas to worry about, but now we have unlocked the Battle Spinner, letting us finally use more than one sticker in the combat. Ironically, we don't even have to use it this fight now that we have Fire and Ice Flowers. These things hit all enemies on the ground and do very good damage, letting us take out this group in only one move. 1-3. Next up is Kamek, and honestly, there isn't anything noteworthy about this fight at all. Battle spin at least two slots and take him down in one turn. This level is special since it has two exits we can take. 1-4 is a very annoying level, so I went to 1-5 instead, which also has nothing noteworthy about it as well. 1-6. The final level in World 1, the difficulty has been upped by a bit by introducing overworld damaging enemies which, instead of battling you, will straight up just hurt you, and hazards. It's kinda hard to dodge the enemies, but make your way to the top. Grab the trumpet, and instead of just fighting the boss, just leave. Pfft. Nothing said you had to fight the boss. World progression in this game is not by chapter completion, but by stickers and things. If you have the items, you can just go to the next world. The only things we need to progress is Poison Mushrooms, which are in 1-5 and 1-6, and the Trumpet, also in 1-6. The only thing we'll miss out on is a page upgrade for holding more stickers, but don't worry, we'll be back here soon. 3-1 I decided to go to World 3 first to pick up something important, but this also starts absolute pain. World 3 is absolutely covered in poison, and touching any of it hurts you, and it spends most of its design in trying to help you avoid it as much as that doesn't help. 3-1 is more annoying near the end, as there's mostly platforming and waiting around. The worst part is that there's some boomerang bros constantly harassing you, and they never go away! Thankfully, there's also a save block in this area for easy resets. At the end, you do fight them, so use a powerful sticker or battle spin twice to take them down in one turn. 3-2 There isn't anything here for you to do yet, so take the right path and just finish the level. 3-3. Just a story progression level. However, make sure to grab the boom box on the way, as we will be using this a ton. When you use this sticker, this thing will fly out double our damage and we can abuse that to the fullest. 3-4. This level is honestly very boring. Just chase the wiggly part around until it joins you and finish the level. And try not to stub your toe on poison. It happens more than you think. 3-5. This is another boring level, with the only real danger being this boomerang bro who can snipe you easily. When getting to the wiggler piece again, you have to do combat with it. These guys have the ability to dodge your moves and strike back. However, they can't dodge a thing sticker, so use anything to calm it down. We have finally reached the pier, and now can obtain one of the most important stickers, the secret door. Buy a few of these and use one in the pier wall for the fish hook, which we do need to progress. Now we can go back to the Goomba Fortress. Go to the level's secret door and obtain the best item in the game, the Squirt Gun. This thing is seriously broken. Quickly go stickerize it and finally we can fight the boss of World 1. To do this fight correctly, we must roll 3 slots in our battle spin. Use anything in the first slot to put him in his main phase, then use the Squirt Gun and mash the A button as you watch as his health completely drains into nothing. After defeating his main phase, he actually isn't dead yet, putting him in one last phase with 1 HP. This is why we need a third slot, so we can actually end the fight without him getting a chance to chip us. 
With Kirsty calling us stupid for not doing the fight correctly, World 1 is finally complete. Now it's time for World 2. 2-1. This level is very long and very boring, as all the enemies make a mad dash to fight you. Just don't forget to grab the chest on the way to the end. 2-2. Two -two. This level is pretty cool. Go up to the back of the Yoshi to fight the three Parakoopas. You should have many things in your inventory at this point, so just use one and continue. The level is indeed done, but we still need to get the chest, which is guarded by none other than Kamek. This fight is different, as he basically turns the entirety of your stickers into e-cameras. Just use a flashy sticker and kill him in one turn, it's literally free. Oh yeah, don't forget to get the light bulb or whatever, it's required. 2-3 one of my least favorite levels in the game. The main area is a maze, which you must do twice to progress. Some enemies you must fight as this is more 2D centric, though honestly, there isn't really anything noteworthy here. 2-4 Just a progression level to get the last chest. There really isn't anything here that can hurt you. 2-5 At last, the final desert level, and one of the longest levels in the game. This place is basically a puzzle, but a lot of the enemies and traps are very simple to avoid. Make your way to the top to fight the second boss, Tower Power Pokey. This fight looks intimidating at first, 300 HP and immunity to almost basically everything. Keyword, almost. This might take you a few tries, but battle spin 3 slots and use a POW block, boom box, and a squirt gun. The POW should crumple him, and if not, just reset. However, if it does, mash the A button for the rest of the fight and he should die on the very first turn. Crumpled opponents take times 2 damage from any attack, while the boombox doubles all damage that you do, letting us do 4 times damage. The squirt gun does 95 damage and pierces defense, letting us do a number higher than 300 and winning the fight. Kersey still thinks we're stupid, but hey, the second boss is down, so who cares? Now we can make a return to World 3. Continue off of World 3, we get to 3-7, and one of the most major roadblocks in the game. This level makes Mario lose all his stickers, his hammer, and also disconnects with Curtsy, which is a win in my book. This isn't a problem at first until you reach the big scuttlebug in the middle of the level. We have to knock its web down and kill it, but we cannot battle spin due to not having Curtsy. The web takes 4 ranged hits, but even once we knock it down, the bug attacks us right afterwards. Is this it? Finally having to tank a hit? Nah. Let's just go to a different world and stay. Hello, I forgot about you. Big Cheap Cheap can be a very easy boss to get hit by. However, apparently nothing is immune to status in this game. So just roll three slots, hit him, fish hook, ba hammer. The fight is basically down from there. With that distraction gone, let's go take a peek at World 5. 5-1. Five this level sucks horribly, as there are spear guys here that are running away with progress and throw spears with super accuracy. On the last room in the right path, after getting the scrap piece for progression, jump back here in the background to obtain the most important thing in the entire game, the Powder Puff. When used, this thing blocks all damage to Mario for 3 turns. This is basically required for the rest of the game. Finish up 5-1 and head back to 3-7 to finally progress World 3 once again. Set up the shield on the last hit on the web and you'll be safe from harm. Kill it quickly and we can finally beat the rest of the level. Side note, you may have to reset since your powder puff sticker could be in an unattainable spot before the boss. Since it's random where all your stickers fall to. 3-8 Other than a wiggler part battle and a scrap piece, nothing here too important. 3-9 A very platforming like level which may take you a few tries. This level also houses the second most important thing in the game, the sponge. It's the same as the powder puff, meaning now we have 6 turns of protection instead of 3. And now, it's time for that level. The level that people only remember World 3 for, the level that is actually kind of cool, and the level that made me have to change the original title for this video. Yes, I am indeed talking about... Oh, Jesus Christ, help me. Sniffing or if it seems to be our first true unavoidable roadblock. Believe me, I've spent too much time here than I want to say. Now, it's not all bad. The first challenge isn't that bad. Actually, you can clear it without taking a hit with some good guessing. However, it all falls apart in round two. We have to hit 20 Sniffits whack-a-mole style to move on. The problem is that we occasionally take damage as time passes. I've tried jumping repeatedly, constant hammering, comboing hearts, clipping out of this room, pause buffering, skipping a level entirely, basically anything, and I found nothing. 
As depressing as it is, we are forced to take damage to progress. If there's some sticker star tech that I'm obviously missing, please let me know. I roughly estimate with perfect RNG and good playing skill, I think 6 is probably the minimum that you can probably take in this minigame. Uh, in the video I have, it's 10, but I don't actually know for sure. Round 3 is round 1, but way easier. And if you're fast, you will not take a hit, meaning that we can finally end the level and progress. Back to 3-2 now to fight the next Wiggler piece. It's joined by plants this time, but it really shouldn't matter if you use a thing sticker. Don't forget the bowling ball so we can progress to 3-11. Boomerang bros are littered everywhere in this level, but with some waiting and good movement, you can get by unnoticed and finish the level. I honestly have nothing else to say about this level. 3-12. This level houses the final Wiggler piece battle and is even easier than the last one. Just use a thing and move on with your life. With all the Wiggler pieces recruited, we can finally enter the boss arena and fight the boss, Glooper Blooper. Who isn't even a challenge? I'm not even joking. If you do the literal same exact strategy we did on the Pokey, he literally dies in one turn. I honestly have nothing else to say about this boss. It's literally that easy. I'm... Bleh. Of course, he still doesn't like our strategy of one-shotting bosses, because it ruins the game or whatever, but we're halfway through this game already, and I don't really care anymore. So let's go ahead and make our way to World 4. 4-1. This level is very simple, but very annoying. With all these snowball-throwing spikes and these cooligans sliding down this hill. Getting to the alternate exit is pretty easy and doesn't really require anything. But the left path is... different. To progress, we need to melt this ice mountain with one of our fire things. Thankfully, we have a magnifying glass to get past it. Oh. Well, I mean, that's fine. We can just use the lighter that we got a long time ago. Oh, no. Don't worry, everything's still fine. We can just go through 1-4, pick up this incredibly useless HP up heart that will be absolutely no use whatsoever in this challenge, go to the level's secret door and pick up the matches. This will surely let us through without needing anything else, right? Oh, no. I really don't see why these can't work. I mean, in 5-1, you can use two different things, so I don't understand why you can't use more than one thing here. Sadly, the only other option that we have is the radiator. Um, where's the radiator again? Does the pain ever end? To the surprise of absolutely no one, we are here at Sniffer with it to obtain the radiator. In order to obtain it, we have to beat the level's special bonus round. The biggest problem? Imagine round one and round two combined! Yeah, the obviously main problem is round two. In order to progress, we need to hit a certain amount of Sniffits, which is five by the way, in order to answer a question to proceed through the game. Just like in round 2, we have no way of stopping damage being dealt to us while we're hitting these sniffets. Basically everything I did in round 2 is basically I also did here. Sadly we have to take more damage through the stupid freaking minigame to proceed to the game. With good luck it takes about 6 to 8 damage to get past this. This pretty much brings your damage count to at least 12 to 18, pretty much dependent on this minigame alone. At least with the radiator in hand, we can finally progress to World 4. On the way back to World 4, I accidentally encountered Bowser Jr. Who is, uh... Not a threat. Just say like every other boss before him. Just roll two slots, squirt gun, and jump on him. Pretty, pretty easy. Back in 4-1, we now have to climb this giant hill to get to the very top to end the level. Just be patient, let the snowballs pass, and it's pretty easy. I only really say this because the snowballs actually do hurt you for some odd reason. 4-2 If there is a contender for worst no-hit level in the entire game, this would probably be top 3. Seriously, this level is the freaking worst. The first part of this level is dodging all of these cooligans that flip-flop and swap around, trying to confuse you and try to hit you. Once you make it past that, say hello to one of the worst enemies in the entire game. Mr. Ice Bro. What's so bad about him? Just watch. Did that throw make any sense? This is the most accurate enemy in the entire game. 
Getting past him is kind of just annoying. Anyway, the best way to get past him is to just jump at the right time. Just don't be stupid. Now, I hope you like that first section because the game makes you do it all again in the third section. It's pretty great. If the ice slide was so great, why isn't there an ice slide too? Oh wait, there is. And that's not even the worst part. Upon entering the fourth and last room, you're bombarded by every single ice bro that ever exists. To get past the first ice bro, we need to make sure we stutter step in his face to make sure his ice balls just don't come close to us. More than likely because the game reads where we're supposed to be when the ice ball collides with us. After murdering that guy, make an absolute mad dash to the end before the second ice bro notices you and snipes you off the cliff. Yeah, this is by far the hardest level yet. 4-3. Oh yeah, the mansion level. Most of these boo fights here are actually pretty easy. Most of them you can just use a shiny jump or a shiny fire flower and it really just ends the fight instantly. Another note in this level is that it also gives us our first infinite jumps. Two of them, in fact. One of them I do use very shortly afterwards, but do keep the other one for a very, very important fight. This boo stack fight is the only fight in this entire mansion with some actual difficulty by it. Boo's HP is actually the number of hits it needs to take before it goes down. This is where the first infinite jump sticker is used, it's just easier to manage that way. With every boo captured, we can now fight the main boss of the mansion, the big boo. Which we can just once again boombox squirt gun, because he only has 100 HP, it's really easy. And with that, the level is pretty much finished. Now before we continue to the next level, there's something I have to discuss. That's right, 4-3's secret door. If you didn't know, 4-3's secret door actually leads back to Dekelberg. This really makes me wonder something. Is there any way to get past this wall to get to this secret door at all? Does it even work without the secret door in place? I really do want to know. If any of you can get to this door very early in Dekelberg, and figure out if you can get to 4-3 early and actually beat 4-3, and when I say beat 4-3, I mean collect the scrap to progress to 4-4. Not only does this mean we can potentially skip getting the radiator, and thus saving some hits in the bonus round, but it also means we can skip playing 4-1 and 4-2, as after we get the scrap piece, we can just go back to Dekelberg when we're done. If anyone can get past this wall, please tell me. I desperately want to know what happens. 4-5. This level is probably one of the easiest in the game. Oh. Let's try that again. At the very start, do the same thing we did to the last ice bro, stutter step in his face, and kill him. After that nonsense, we can actually start the actual level, which is a trolley level. This level is not exactly hard, it just takes some time to learn. However, the level kind of goes on for a long while, so... The only real exact danger is the ice bros once again throwing ice balls at you, since all the other enemies in the level you come in contact with actually do a battle with you. This level takes a few tries, but it's totally manageable without getting hit. 4-6 The final level in World 4 And also a contender for one of the worst levels in this game! Hitless, of course. This is a minecart level full of spikes, pits, and puzzles, all of which are very easy to screw up jumping over and getting chipped. But the most annoying and puzzling part of this level is the start of the second section. There are three bombs right next to each other, ready to blow up, and no matter what kind of timing you come in at, they just seem to blow up on you. I legit spent hours on this part, trying anything I could think of to get past this, and nothing just happened. Is this part really impossible to pass without getting hit? Does this game really have that bad of game design to just allow this? I got massively curious to see if anyone else got through this part, and sure enough, everywhere on YouTube I looked, every video I saw just gets hit at this exact spot. But while I was about ready to give up, there was one last video that I watched that gave me a massive realization. I forgot you can first strike stuff. Of course this takes HP up hearts, but honestly, they're not even that bad to get. In fact, it's actually possible to get every single HP up heart in the game, except for one. It's a million dollar guess to guess which one it is. Of course we don't have to do that, we just need enough HP to give us enough attack power to kill the bomb. 
At 20 HP, our jump attack does 3 damage on a first strike. But bombs have 7 HP, meaning that we need at least 8 HP of hearts to bring our total up to 60 HP. So we can do 7 damage with a jump strike. With 60 HP in hand, time your jump very carefully to land on the last bomb so you can kill it before it explodes. Now we can finally, FINALLY move on from that absolute nightmare. At the mini rest area, don't even try to save because it's being guarded by bombs. And an ice bro. Just fight the boss. Trust me, it's not as hard as you think it is. And with that, it actually is time to fight the World 4 boss, Bowser Snow Statue. This does look like a really intimidating boss. He has 400 HP and actually has a damage cap threshold so we can't pass in one attack. So we can't actually kill him in one turn. That's fine though, we'll just go with the defensive. Roll at least two slots with your shield in one of those slots and in the next few turns go to town with any fire stickers you have. Since Pokemon logic dictates since he's an ice type, that means fire is good against him. Seriously though, you should really be able to kill him for the third turn if you just spam fire on him. Getting us the win. And with that, World 4 is finally over. Now it's time for the fifth and final world. Quotation marks. 5-1 was completed earlier, so we can just jump straight into 5-2. This level is an incredibly boring, auto-scrolling raft level. There's literally nothing here. Skip 5-3. It is also an incredibly boring Wrath level. Great design. On the right on the main path of the level, go to the right of this alcove to get what is basically a free wind button. 5-4. This level has some pretty decent danger in it with some nasty overworld enemies and these spinning rotating disc things. Grab a backup infinite jump sticker up here and now we can go ahead and get to the end of the level. This ending is rather infamous for being really freaking stupid. However, the only real difference we have to make during this is putting up a shield on the last turn. The Chain Chomp will instead attack that, leaving you damage free. With that out of the way, the level's pretty much done. 5-5. This is pretty much your standard volcano level. Nothing too special here. If you go to the left of this rock, you can pick up the Car Sponge, which is the last of the shields you can get in the game. Now we have 9 turns of protection, and this will be good for the final fight. Other than that, there's really nothing here. Man, World 5 is a lot more boring than I remember it being. 5-6 Remember that top 3 chart for worst levels in the entire game? Yeah. This is number 1. Where do I even begin? Well first off, even though no fights require it, we don't have a battle spinner. Well second, this level is incredibly and needlessly long for no reason. Some parts of the level can just be played out normally, some other parts are just flat out annoying. First up, Fire Bros, which are somehow worse than Ice Brothers? What? How does that even work? Second is the 5-4 puzzle again, only with a major, major drawback. We need these shields, but this fight basically requires that we use one. I'll go into more major detail when we actually make it to the boss. Next up on very annoying crap is this giant magma room. It indeed does have a fire bro, but he sucks apparently. It still doesn't make any sense, but whatever. The place is a lot shorter than you think, so there's absolutely no problems here. But then we make it to Petey and quickly realize why this level sucks complete in other balls. So here's how you kill Petey in a no hit run. First off, we need to crumple him, which is RNG, which is already bad news from the start. If he doesn't crumple the first time, then wait for your shield to run out and then apply another one. Yes, you need the shield. The shield is absolutely necessary for this next part. Once you get the crumple, he'll stay down, allowing you to jump on him. This is now the time to use an infinite jump to guarantee that Kirsty gets out of him. Now here's the biggest reason why we still need the shield. While we're hitting him with the infinite jump, a dry bones will spit out of him. Since it's technically our turn and our turn ends after we use the infinite jump, dry bones immediately attacks us. So yeah, without the shield we would be in a losing situation here. The main reason this fight absolutely sucks though is that if you mess up anything, you have to do the entire level over again. Keep in mind that this is kind of a long level. Also do keep in mind that while Curtsy is still in his stomach, he can't technically die. 
So yeah, the shield is incredibly necessary to complete this fight hitless. But yeah, now that we have Curtsy, we can finish him off any way we want, and we can finally beat World 5. And surprise, surprise, we aren't done yet as we still need to take out Bowser. In 6-2, the only real danger in this level is the second room and the second to last room. In the second room, this Ice Bro is basically a god and will snipe you from halfway across the room like five times. In reality though, it's not that bad. And in this room, there's this group of bros that bombard you when you step in. But you can make it to the door before they destroy you. Junior can be easily beaten if you use a tail and counter all of his attacks. But that takes skill, and I haven't used skill at all for this entire challenge, so why use it now? Set up your shield, double your damage, and basically use whatever you want until he gives up. 6-3. This is it. Time for the final level. But before we head to the final boss, we have a mini boss fight with Kamek again. I was really kind of dreading this fight at first, but the battle is once again a literal joke. You need to roll three slots for this to work, and if not, just run away and retry. Once you do, take two normal slippers and then a flashy slipper, and if you don't mess up, you pretty much win. Still freaking free. Be careful not to slip and fall on the way, because it's finally time to fight Bowser and end this game. Phase 1, Section 1. Tape up the stage so we free Bowser for a turn and get rid of his backup. It's very important that we get rid of a lot of his health now, and we must keep a shield for Phase 2 so we only have 7 turns to work with. Keep bashing him until he runs away like a wuss. Section 2. We need to kill the Thwomp quickly to continue damaging Bowser. The best way to kill him was a spare e camber and then the scissors. Once again, bash his face in until he leaves. Section 3. Bowser now has fire dudes with him, but this is pretty much irrelevant since we are under his shield anyway. Just damage him as normal until the next wave. Section 4. The final section. Bowser now has a chain chomp partner with him. This is probably the most difficult part of them all. Wait for your shield to run out, equip a tail, take a deep breath, and watch which attack he does to counter correctly. Either the Chomp will slowly come up to you, which is the free attack, or Bowser will swing him like a ball and chain, which is way more harder to counter. Regardless, once you counter one of them, Phase 1 is finally done. Alright, time for Phase 2. This is probably, most likely, by far the hardest phase yet. Turn 1, set up your shield. What else did you expect? Seriously though, if you don't kill Bowser by turn 3, then clearly I don't know how you got this far in this challenge. With Bowser defeated and Curtsy dead, the game is finally over. So, what's our low damage score? Uh, seems to be about 12 to 18, I guess. That's really, a, honestly, just a dang shame. If we could skip that stupid minigame, we wouldn't even be in this situation. Oh well, maybe one day we can figure out a way to skip it. But right now, I think we're done. Like I always say, if you like this video, please tell me why, and if you don't like this video, please tell me why it sucks and how I can make it slightly better. I'm truly honestly surprised if you've even made it this far because, you know, it's it's Sticker Star, you know, Sticker Star. It's also great because I spent 9 months making this video, and you know, Origami King happened, so that's pretty cool. Anyway, I don't know what other challenges I'm probably going to do, but it's probably going to be something that isn't Paper Mario related, because, uh, I don't like the next game after this, so, yeah. I don't really have anything else to say at this point, so, I'll see you later, and goodbye. By the way, if you wanted to see the full 7 hour run of my challenge that you shouldn't do, uh, it'll be right up there in the top right. Top right, yeah, that's right. Anyway, yeah.